What is up, Felix Lair here for Thomas Synthesizers and recently I started digging a bit deeper into drum synthesis and what I mean is not just tweaking one or two parameters on a drum machine but actually building drum sounds from the ground up where every aspect of it uh, yeah, has an intention behind it. And I landed on the Nord Drum 3P which has a beautiful layout um, that makes everything just super easy to understand, um, especially layering various aspects to create one cohesive drum sound. So that's what we're going to have a look at, but obviously all of these ideas apply to basically any synth that you can get your hands on. But yeah, just with the Nord Drum it's going to be especially easy to understand. <laughs> All right, here we are with the Nord Drum 3P. First, a very quick overview. Um, with this, we can create six individual drum sounds at a time, uh, each having their own channel here, as also indicated by the six touch sensitive pads here, um, which can hit either by hand or by stick, but I don't have any drumming skills, so I'm gonna, as I'm doing already right now, just send in MIDI notes in here from Ableton, and one note is gonna correspond to each channel. So this is just a MIDI clip running in Ableton right now. All right, let's have a look at the overview. Each of these six sounds consists of three distinct layers and these layers can be controlled by these three sections circled in white here. The tone section, the noise section and the click section. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm first going to synthesize a kick drum, then a snare drum and then a hi-hat and maybe a percussion or a tom or whatever. And this way you should get a basic idea of how drum synthesis works here. And um, I guess along the way you're automatically going to find out that you can do all of these things pretty much with any synth. Just here it's in a very compact form factor and uh, very easy to understand and that's why I choose the Nord Drum for this video. Anyways, let's start by creating the first sound here for the tone section of the kick drum. So let's have a listen. All right, first we're gonna choose the waveform. And for that, I'm just gonna choose the most basic sine wave type sound here. It's not filtered yet. Here you can obviously control the decay, make it longer. And this is very important to bend. This is gonna pitch bend the sound. Um, so if I increase the bend, the sound is going to be a higher frequency in the beginning and then a lower frequency towards the end. And that's pretty much how kick drum synthesis works. And as you can see, there's two windows here um, for each parameter. We can either control the main value by just turning this wheel or we can control the secondary value which is always in red here, by pressing this button and simultaneously twisting the knob. Yeah, so this way I control the main sound value and this way I control the secondary value. In this case, it's the bend time is the secondary value and the main value is the bend amount. So here we have a fair bit of bend going on. So the sound is gonna be much higher in the very beginning, but I want a short time. So this way it's just going up higher for a very short amount, which is gonna give us some high frequency content, but then the main fundamental frequency is gonna be very deep. All right, up next, let's create a click sound. I'm just gonna mute the tone sound so that you can hear just what the click does. This is basically just a selection of tiny um, transient sounds. As you can hear, some white noisy sounds. And I guess these are just samples that you can basically select and create the volume of. Yeah, just very tiny sounds. I think I like the P a lot. Let's listen how it sounds together with the tone. It doesn't have to be so loud. I think like this works. You always have to work on the balancing of the individual volumes because uh, they have to blend into each other nicely. And I think this way it sounds very coherent. And lastly, let's create some noise to make it even more complex. So let me turn up the noise volume. And 
And as you can hear, there's now a little layer of white noise. We can also control the decay here and filter it. I think it must be a bit deeper, so I'm gonna filter out more of the high frequency content. Make it a bit shorter and add some resonance. And now I'm actually gonna lower it way down to have it just be a very subtle detail in the sound. All right, and this is how you would um, create a kick drum from scratch from three layers. The tone giving us the body of the sound, the click giving us a transient, and the noise giving us some more random content, random frequency content with, uh, yeah, a bit for a bit of texture. And we can also control it a bit by filtering it. All right, up next, let's move on to the next sound and create a snare drum. So now let's first mute the kick, move over here, and create a new sound from scratch. So again, I'm going to turn down the click and the volume. Now we're just having the bass here. And for this, we might choose a different waveform. And what's great here is that these are not your typical waveforms only, but these already sound somewhat like organic drum sounds, which is great. So it's, let's actually stick with this, maybe pitch it a bit higher and then add some bend again because we want to be, have it very distinct from the kick drum which is lower so we're going to make the snare drum a bit higher add a bit of bend and a bit of bend timing this way we have a bit more of an impact yeah maybe like this now we can add some click again I think P2 sounds lovely. And lastly, for the snare, very important, let's add some noise. This is gonna make it sound like a snare, actually. Yeah, so the synthesis of the snare drum here in this case, very similar to the kick drum. We have some pitch band on the tone, but the main difference is it's a bit higher in the pitch of the tone and also the frequencies, uh, the filter of the noise is going to emphasize the higher frequencies more. And then you could of course also even automate this via MIDI CC or just record it while you manipulate the layers, but I just for the sake of demonstration want to keep it simple here. So now we have a snare drum and a kick drum and next let's maybe create a hi-hat which is going to be very easy. Hi-hats often are just uh, white noise basically with a short envelope. Um, but we can also of course add a tone for some additional character. So let's do that real quick. So here we already have a tone. The waveform is C1 in this case, which is a bit, yeah, it sounds nice and metallic, but I think I want it even higher a bit. And shorter. And now same thing, let's add some click, but in this case, yeah, more of a noisy click, N2 in this case. And lastly, let's add some noise, which is just some even higher white noise, where the filter is even higher. All right, and lastly, what we could do is create a tom, kind of sound which would sit somewhere between the snare and the kick drum frequency wise. Yeah, this one actually also sounds lovely already. The waveform here is D3. Let's check out D2, D1. I think D1 is lovely, it's a bit more muted. Yeah, it also has some bend to it in the beginning and a fairly quick bend time. It has a bit of a noisy click and... some fairly low noise that we can manipulate. And yeah, I guess that's it already. Um, you get the idea.
You could do this with any other synth as well. You just have to manually layer different sounds um, to create a basic foundation that's going to be the main frequency and pitch and also pitch uh, bend of your sound. Um, and then you're going to layer in a transient manually that you could take from a sample or synthesize yourself or whatever. And noise is going to fill, uh, help you fill up the spaces in between to make the sound more rich and fuller. And as you saw, for kick drum, snare drum, uh, hi-hat and tom, the approach was pretty much the same. We used pretty much the same elements, just different waveforms um, and different clicks. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just that each of these sounds has a different um, role in the frequency spectrum. So the kick drum obviously is going to be fairly deep, hi-hats is going to be fairly high and um, everything in between. Uh, there's a lot of room for creativity, obviously, and you can, also, of course, also create percussive sounds that are not as easily um, categorized. Yeah? That would be more um, outside the box, because that's the beauty of electronic music, that you are not bound to these typical categories. All right, I guess that's it from my side for today. In case you have any more questions, uh, as usual, drop them in the comments. I'm going to try and get back to you ASAP. And apart from that, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Peace out.